Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm your host, Dr. Heather Shah. On behalf of Calvos, I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. Today, we have another very interesting topic, and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker, who is going to talk about raising the visibility of your research. Most of the time, we carry out a wonderful research work, and we are not sure how to promote it and whether it is visible to the end users or not. So how to improve your research visibility? You will get the best insights about all these things as we have an expert with us in today's this session. So stay tuned because an amazing stuff are coming ahead in this session. So before we start, I would like to thank all of us for arranging such enlightenment sessions for their support and providing us such a wonderful platform. The aim of Calvas is to give you the opportunity to connect and interact with world-renowned speakers, academic leaders, teachers, authors, researchers, and experts, professionals, and businessmen to learn from their experiences, recommendations, and suggestions, which will create an impact and will enable you to learn and develop yourself in order to grow and transform individually, as well as to contribute to the world in a positive way. As our slogan is, come, learn, and share knowledge. So today we have an amazing person as guest. He's an internationally known and recognized speaker, a multi-dynamic person with a great qualities, having vast experience and exposure in academia and industry. A man from a leading institution, he's a great human being, and we always see him while uh, contributing to the world in different positive way. So let me introduce him formally. Uh, he received his PhD in hotel and tourism management from University of Technology, Mara, in 2016. His research focus centers on tourism, economics, and management. It is imperative to acknowledge his achievement during his PhD tenure, in which he was awarded GOT, Graduate on Time Award, and Research Excellence Award during his convocation. In fact, he was the first ever faculty member to receive such acknowledgement. He has been rapidly identified as an excellent social science uh, statistician by his fellow students and peers. His Google Scholar CV lists more than 100 peer review papers and articles with more than 500 citations and H index of 14. In addition to that, he edited six books uh, proceedings of which two of them were indexed with the Scopus and Web of Science. As an academic staff, beside teaching, he has been instrumental in the revision of several of academic programs at the faculty level. He has been dealing with the faculty ma matters uh, such as uh, curriculum review, new program development, Malaysian research assessment, etc. As an educator, he looks forward to new challenges and opportunities for growth, both personally and professionally. He believed that there is nothing like being a room of like-minded people who are willing to take time away from their comfort zone to learn something new and want to better themselves. Last but not the least, he's a wonderful speaker, author, teacher, researcher, professional, and above everything, a great human being. So please help me in welcoming our guest, Dr. Muhammad Hafez Hanafiya. Welcome to the Calvas platform and thank you very much for joining us, Prof. Thank you, Haider. Thank you for, for our lengthy introductions. Eh? Yeah. It's really a pleasure to have you, Prof. And uh, such a worthy and uh, it, has, it is so wonderful prof, uh, profile. And we feel proud of you, Prof, the way you contribute to the world and feel that's wonderful. Hats off to you. Uh, a gentle reminder to the audience that Prof will be presenting and he will leave time for question answer session at the end of the session. If you have any question, you can write in comment section or you can email us on info at the rate of .com. So let us get started. Over to you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dr. Haider, again for that uh, lengthy introductions. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm just a researcher and I consider myself as an academician, a young academician. Not that young. Not that young. <laughs> Uh, but again, um, it's a lifelong learning process. You know, uh, we keep on learning new things. And today, thanks to Dr. Haider, he invited me to share something that is quite uh, close yeah, to myself. Yeah, 
which is the research visibility. The reason being is that I was the coordinator for research visibility in UITM. So we did uh, quite a few activities and efforts in order to what we say enhance the researcher and also research visibility in UITM. So talking about UITM, just a little bit introduction about my university and my faculty. I am from the Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management, which is currently been ranked uh, top 100 in the QS World University Ranking by Subjects 2021 in Hospitality and Leisure Management Subjects. Yeah? So, uh, well, you can call me Hafiz, yeah? uh, and again, uh, I would just to share that uh, uh, I did, uh, we both of us, Haider and, and myself is from University Malaya, a proud alumnus. Yeah. And currently I am the Deputy Dean of Research and Industry Linkages of the Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management. I am also the Board of Trustee for Islamic Tourism Centre, Malaysia. And currently, I'm also the executive editor for the JTHCA, the Journal of Tourism, Hospitality and Culinary Arts, which is currently uh, indexed by ASEAN Citation Index. And hopefully, in a few years, will be indexed by ESEI and Scopus. Uh, Besides that, I'm also quite active with the editorial board and also reviewing activities. Yep. So, yeah, uh, looking at the topic today, yep, which is how to maximize your visibility as a researcher. This is something interesting. This is something that I hope I was being in, informed earlier in my uh, uh, stage as an academician and researcher. Yep. I did a lot of mistakes yep, uh, during my early, early, early years of research, as a researcher. And I hope that my sharing would, I will, would keep you informed and enhance your understanding of why visibility is important and why how visibility can actually enhance your career path. Okay, so um, I, 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 if you ask me personally, uh, Dr. Haider here is actually quite a visible person. Uh, one of the things that I like with him is he's very straightforward and he practice the principles of visibility and researchers, which is search searching for information yeah and he did not have any any issues or he, he's not afraid to uh what we say to approach researchers yeah this is uh something that i i was observing not only today but for the past few months uh I, we will be befriended uh, in facebook uh, i think last for the i think since 2021 during covid 19 and I can see how he used technology and COVID-19 uh, as his advantage in creating the linkages yeah, uh, between uh, researchers around the world. Yeah? So uh, 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 congrats, uh, Dr. Haider. So uh, this, is, this, is, this is just a sharing that we are going to learn uh, various techniques on how you as a researcher uh, it's, it's okay whether you are a young researcher or a senior researcher, how you can increase the visibility and impact your research works. So um, talking about this, uh, how to maximize your visibility as a researcher, I, I hope that uh, we are going to answer this question. First, why should I start managing my research output? You know, I mean, ev everything is online right now. But again, uh, trust me that you need to do some housekeeping you need to manage your research output and you need to manage it uh, daily yeah? or, or, or as or, or not weekly in order to ensure that uh, your output is updated your output is easily searched by potential yeah, researcher who are going to set your works and the second question is how to start managing my research output so somehow somehow these are the things that uh, were quite hard those days, but nowadays there's a lot of uh, free uh, websites and applications that allow you to manage your research output. Yeah, not only uh, basing uh, the effort by your university. 
And there's a lot of registration system that we're going to look, we're going to explore, and we're going to discuss which one is much more reliable and sustainable. And what are the tips and tricks yeah, uh, to make sure that your research will be ready. This is the, the, the most important question. I mean, you publish your work, you want people to read, and you want people to consume the knowledge that you impart. And again, the way how the academia will work is they looks on citations. Now, this is how uh, uh, the uh, the academia, yeah, the academia, uh, the scholars uh, rate or rank how effective, how efficient are you as a researcher, and how good is your research work. And last but not least is whether you should have an author identifier. Uh, I mean, we have few author identifiers. I'm going to share uh, these steps and even my slides also uh, will uh, let you, assist you on how to register and how to edit or manage these uh, author identifier accounts. So uh, going forward, um, this is the realities facing modern researchers. I mean, the, there's a global increase in researchers. I mean, uh, if you are in tourism, I mean, you should know uh, researchers such as Pizam, Abraham Pizam. Uh, you should know uh, researchers such as uh, Gan, Robert Gan, and uh, Lester Morrison. These are all top researchers. And the reason being they were, they were quite popular is because uh, there are limited numbers of tourism researchers at that point of time. But nowadays, there's a lot of young, new tourism researchers. The reason being is that all these uh, developed countries, second world countries and third world countries are spending more money on education and therefore they want to start developing new scholars within that particular area. And this has caused influx in the number of researchers. Yeah? And the, the growth in the scientific communication channels, you can see, I mean, those days we all, I mean, I, when I did my master's, there's, there's what, there's, there were like quite a few handy numbers of tourism journals. But now we have what, like more than 200, 300 journals yeah, in tourism specifically. And uh, half of them were indexed by Scopus. So the potent, the opportunity is getting bigger, but again, you need to understand that it is very competitive because the numbers of research publication have also increased. Yep. And there's, there's the reason, as you can see here, there's a growth in peer-reviewed papers published. This is correlated with the numbers of uh, journals and also researchers. And there's a lot of technology and format advances in which it is much easier to do research. I believe Dr. Haider will agree with me when we did our master's program, we have to go to the library, I think every day. And we are limited with the, the journals that have been subscribed by the, 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 our, our university library, in which we have to travel to other universities just to get uh, I would say our information data and to cite appropriate uh, articles. But nowadays, I mean, everything can be done in front of your laptops. I mean, you can search, you can download your articles, uh, we say, uh, through a legal uh, sources or even illegal sources. Yeah, uh, and uh, hence, uh, with the technology advancement, with the numbers of uh, researchers uh, are getting bigger and bigger. I mean, there is a demand for collaborative research. I mean, uh, we are go go beyond uh, institutional and geographic boundaries, and perhaps you can see there's a lot of frequent uh, increased frequency of multi-authored papers. Yep. So this is the the realities, and we have to face it because we are the modern researchers. Yep. And um, so the question, the the main issue is that how how I mean that there's no way that you can avoid this, you need to be visible. Yeah, so uh, you need to be easily searched, you need to be easily known. Yeah? And uh, as things are getting competitive, it's not easy to be visible. But again, there are ways that we can uh, we say assist ourselves, yeah? assist our friends, assist our universities or faculty members to be visible among our research 
areas. And uh, the first thing is that we need to be seen. You know, so uh, definitely I'll show you how how to make your research work visible, because you must understand that your research works, your your research activities is the most valuable prospect that you want people to easily or uh, easily find and they can find fast. Yep. And you need to be found. Even you are seen. But if, do you think that uh, I can easily search Dr. Hyder emails? Yeah, email address. I mean, it's not that easy because if we found Dr. Hyder uh, Google Scholar profile, it does not publish the email address. So how am I going to contact Dr. Hyder if I have some proposition or I would like to collaborate with him. So this is something important. And that's the reason why most of these uh, top, uh, what we say, researchers, they have their own website, personalized websites, because they want to share, they want to be found faster, rather than you have to go through the uh, university website, searching for which, which is very conventional. Yeah, and it's very, there's a lot of information that you need to screen in order to get that particular information. So be found is another task that you need to achieve. And last but not least is to be cited. I mean, again, if I mean to be cited means to 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 collaborate. I mean, that is the most important thing where as you are being seen, you can be found, you can be cited. Even as a collaborators, uh, I mean, your work's been cited in their, their journal's articles or even be cited uh, by, uh, during the discussions. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, we, we are going towards that. So, uh, then the main focus is to maximize your visibility and citability. So, I do believe that most, some of you, most of you are visible and citable, but you have no idea on how to maximize your visibility and, again, your citations. Yep. So, uh, and nowadays, we always talk about online visibility. You know, uh, don't worry. If you are not popular at university, you might be popular in social media. You might be popular in uh, these social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I have few friends who are very active in sharing research and academic pointers in TikTok videos, which got, uh, have garnered, I mean, quite a number of followers. This is what we call online visibility. So online visibility is a powerful way to boost your professional profile. I mean, you have your online resume, you can have your online CV made available and easily downloaded by potential collaborators. And you take control of their research area. I mean, you, you try to proclaim that you are an expert in tourism management. You are an expert in organizational behavior. You are an expert in consumer behavior. So how do people know is to make, make yourself visible online. And uh, be, with that, uh, where people can easily search, you are easily found. Either you were being searched or you were just... Uh, what you they, they can saw your profile was scrolling down the Facebook, then you gain recognitions uh, in within your discipline, and it's also improved research efficiency in which uh, uh, how it make uh, res, uh, your research and yourself discoverable and accessible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, this is a proof that. Online visibility is the way forward. I mean, again, with the COVID-19 pandemic, everybody uh, uh, been put in front of your own table. You are not allowed to travel. And this is the only way for you to, to spread your wing yeah, with online uh, or, or digitally. Yep. So the, the concern with online visibility is also it allow some sort of citation tracking system in which you can have this data uh, where it reflects your counts your and how who cited you uh, or from where do your research uh, reflects yeah, or gain interest and this uh, data can be translated into altimetric uh, in which can rank or measure your efficiency and effectiveness uh, besides that it also create 
connections or networking among other researchers. That is how you grow your networks. And besides that, it allows for communication between scientists and the general public. Yep. So I do believe that um, my families are well informed that I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and uh, they uh, hesitate to uh, we say uh, ask me for uh, inviting me for any social activity. But again, it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you have to avoid all these social activities. I mean, you can be busy at the same time. You can be social, yeah, uh, active. The reason means that because everything is online. So that's the best thing about online visibility. Everything can be managed by yourself. This is actually something uh, that would not happen 10, 20 years ago because your visibility, your online visibility was only was managed totally by your institutions. And as time moves on, the our educational institution also under, understand that and they even allow us to have our own uh, personal homepage and even make it a must for us to register for Google Scholar, Pablons, Pocket ID because they understand how this profile could actually affect them in terms of their ranking and also their visibility as an organization. So, um, well, the question, the next question will be what type of visibility? So definitely we are talking about research visibility and researcher visibility. These are two things, but they are interrelated. The research visibility means we are focusing on your research works to make sure that it is easily searched, easily downloaded, and also easily can be cited. As compared to researcher visibility, we want you to be visible among your peers. Yeah, it's if, if I mean this is uh, something that is uh, quite important later when you want to develop yourself as a research scholar. I mean you need to be visible among your peers in order for you to get invitation as thesis examiners, and uh, as universities uh, make it a must to have at least one international examiners. So uh, if you are not visible, then you are not going to get that invitation. So this is something that uh, I believe Dr. Haider also agree with me. Yeah, and uh, I, I would like to support that statement saying that I did receive a lot of invitations to become examiners, reviewers, because I publish a lot. And I did share a lot of my research work to the public. And most of my networks came from Facebook Messenger. So you can see how, how, how effective are these online visibilities. So um, the question to talk about visibility is we, we, we have to answer this question, the big who, who are the stakeholders of your research. You are not trying to be popular like Beyonce. You're not trying to be popular like Shah Rukh Khan, you know. Uh, even Shah Rukh Khan was actually quite popular among uh, the Hindi film uh, followers. He is not popular uh, with other regime. So you need to be very specific. So if you ask myself, I, I, who are the stakeholders of my research? First is the tourism areas, expert researchers students, postgraduate students, and also industry players. So this is your stakeholders, because eventually experts will connect, will collaborate, um, peers will work together with you, students and postgraduate students will nominate you as their supervisors. You're going to do a lot of research grant together with them, and the industry player would take you as their expert panel. So you can see that when, when, when you understand who is your stakeholders, then you know what are the information, what are the type of visibility that you need to portray to these stakeholders. And each of them have different interests. Yep. And next will be the big how. 
So how could they access your work? So it's easy for academia to access your work. Because, I mean, uh, most of the time they can just, they know how to use Google Scholar and they can just download from their repository. And this is the same thing with your international students or your, your postgraduate students. But how do you think that industry player will search for you? I mean, definitely they will just Google you. And if is it easy to find Haider Shah or Hafiz Hanasya? Can they get your email? Can they get your phone number? So this is important because usually they, 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 they need to get you as soon as possible. So with that time limitation, your visibility is very important. And can they discover your works? So that's the reason why, uh, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do that. But again, uh, for academia, your, the, 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 the work must be registered under a few uh, author profile system that actually been accepted by the global research uh, uh, say community. But again, for industry, they just want to know who are you and what are you doing? So that's the reason why besides having that, you should also make your CVs online. Yeah? So I, I have, uh, there's a lot of ways to make your CVs online. You can upload it in your Google Drive and share the links. You can uh, have your online websites. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of few online websites that, that offer free, limited, uh, personalized websites. But again, this is the question that you need to answer before planning for your visibility. And uh, talking about research visibility, oh, well, this is something else because previously we are talking about research visibility, but now it's your research visibility. So there's uh, this is the process or of doing research while writing during submissions publication and even applying for research grants so while writing your works choose a great title i mean people always say that you don't judge the book by its cover but people always judge the book by its cover that's a, that's the norms of human nature so come come with uh, excellent topics catch their attention you know nowadays journals accept uh, accepting uh, titles that reflects, uh, say, these uh, magazines or newspapers' titles, style of writing. You know, starting with question, provocations, uh, titles. And you need to write a fitting abstract. I mean, use consistent alternate. This is something that I I, I make a mess. Yeah? My name is Muhammad Hafiz Muhammad Hanafiya. So previously, I, 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 I have few author names, which is Muhammad Hafiz, Hafiz Hanafia, Muhammad Hafiz Hanafia, and Muhammad Hafiz Hanafia. So I just, I think a, a year or two years before I did my PhD, I started using a standard prof author name. And the author name doesn't, doesn't, doesn't need you to, I mean, doesn't mean that you need to use your full names. You need to get a catchy name. So right now, my, my author name is Hanafia which is my father's name. Yeah, but again, uh, people know that Muhammad Hafiz Hanafia is me, and I use consistent and correct affiliations. The reason, the reason being is that because right now my institution are very particular on uh, affiliations, and it helps to boost their ranking. So you need to make sure that you use your correct affiliation. If you have multiple branches like UITM, you need to be very specific which branch are you are. Yep, and and uh, one of the concerns of affiliation is you you should also use your official emails. I have seen a lot of good papers uh, that use in uh, say this uh, individualized emails coming from Gmail, Outlook.com, which does not reflect professionalism. And based on my experience, the reason why I highlight that concern is that whenever I want to get a copy of their, their, their paper or want to like to communicate with the authors, most of these authors that use uh, what we say uh, generic emails does not reply to my email. Maybe perhaps they use that email during their study and then they move on. So you can see how, how hard for us to get to contact them. But it's easy for us to, to be confident uh, contacting uh, a researcher that used their 
organization emails. And during submission, always go with open access. Yep. I mean, uh, if you have grant, you can go with this goal access or what. But uh, frankly, I have no problem. I rarely, I, I, I never, eh, since my PhD, I never uh, published with paid journals, only like one or two. This is because my co-author would like to do that. I am the co-author, I'm not the corresponding author. The reason being said, I have no problem with this, uh, say this uh, uh, close access journal because my university actually paid for, for this access. So it's easy for me to share. And I also shared this article uh, discreetly in uh, Research Kit. So it's easy for people to download my papers. And after publication is the most integral activities that actually reflect how visible would be your work. So, so usually when I publish my papers, I promote the, the, the publication in social media. You can see a lot of um, researchers in Malaysia, I mean, share their, their, their publication. Uh, and most of us will get like free 50 e-copies, which uh, allow the, the, uh, the, the readers to download it for free. <clears throat> and we also share our preprints in uh, ResearchGate and Academia. And we also uh, are, we also do some housekeeping in Google Scholar. You know, in Google Scholar, you can actually, uh, I mean, it's automatically, the, the web crawler will automatically add your paper in the Google Scholar profile. But you are allowed to edit because sometimes in your Google Scholar, the information is incomplete. So you can add the volume number, issues number, page numbers, and then it's easy for people to cite from Google Scholar. Yeah, to get the full citation. And besides that, I also publish uh, research. I also publish my research grant activities, experience, acquisitions. Yeah, and in which from there I also managed to get some matching grant. You know, like Dr. Hyder, who, who might saw me getting uh, a, a, a grant on uh, community well-being, and he might be interested to do that in. His institution, so therefore he will approach me and invite me to collaborate. We are using the same proposal but focusing on Bangladesh setting, and in which they will get some grants from the universities. So this is how uh, this matching grant works, and we we can collaborate and we can do more papers, and even we can do some comparison uh, research between two or three different settings. So this is this is research visibility. Yeah? So the choices must be high impact journal. I have to say that high impact journals are, are, are much visible. And one of the things that I got to know when my my friends who went to Edinburgh University, they were while while doing their assignment, while doing their proposal, they were only allowed to cite to read to refer to top high end journals. Or the ABCD journals. So, if you publish in low end journals, your paper will not be cited. Your people, your paper will not be read. Yeah? And again, it will definitely affect your citation count. So, international publication is the way forward. And there's a lot of international publishers such as Taylor and Francis, Emerald, In the Science, yeah, uh, Rotledge, yeah. And you need to have co. You have to co-author your paper with other researchers. The, 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 the easiest mistake done by your researcher is to work in silo or only work with the people around in front of them, which is their counterparts in their university. So usually you need to understand journals are like magazine, they are doing business, they are selling they are the, 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 the uh, right up and they need to get readers, readership. Yep, and uh, to, in order to get readership, the, the paper must be interesting. At the same time, the paper must have multi-cultural uh, elements, you know. So it will, it, 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 is, it, it seems like it is much more holistic. But again, uh, having co-authorship, uh, international co-authorship, reflects that that particular research has been done with different school of thought. Yeah, and how they embrace that school of thought to a very perfect people. And 
uh, how to find uh, high impact journals, I always ask my students focus on Clarivate Analytics, which is MJL, and also SJR, which is Himago General Country and Mine. So these are the only two reliable sources to identify the high impact journals. Yep. So uh, going forward, uh, besides publication, you also need to develop your researcher visibility using this author profile. We have author this immigration services, which is Orchid ID, Pablons, which is previously the researcher ID from WOS, and Scopus ID, which uh, is coming from Scopus and will be automatically registered. You cannot register Scopus author ID. The Scopus, your Scopus ID will only be registered during your first Scopus publication. And then you will get your Scopus ID and you can have researcher communities, which is ResearchGate. You can use search engine with author profile, which is Google Scholar. This is the most popular, the most easiest way to develop your author profile. And in fact, uh, you have your own university author profile page. I mean, in UITM, we have this Prisma, which uh, which you have to register your publication in order for your uh, what you say KPIs assessment end of the year, and also the UITM expert, in which this is like a university author profile that lists all your research activities and your grants acquisition. Yeah, and but not citation because citation count was quite uh, hard for them to drag on. But yeah, uh, I mean these are the potentials author profile uh, account that you should have if you want to be in this area, which is doing research. Yep. And uh, how how this profile? I mean, again, the how this benefit researchers. First, you put all your profile information in one place. You increase your visibility of your research. You it's a it's a self promotion and marketing tool. I mean, uh, very user friendly and it offer engaging content and services. They they come up with all these altimetrics that uh, reflects uh, the, the the I mean they rank and they 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 they, they quantify your your research works and also your efficiency yeah, in doing research. And yeah, the question is well. Based on what I have, maybe you are interested to become visible. So the, the question will be, what should I do? First, use correct affiliation. So you can see here, this is my affiliation. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, my uh, my university's name keep on changing. So this is not good. Yeah. So please be precise uh, and be careful or be aware with this uh, type of author, whether you are the main author. You are the co-author or the corresponding author. So in UITM right now, they value more for the corresponding author and main author because main author is the person who actually do, who actually uh, come up with the idea, who set up the, the research, set up the publication. The co-author who assists in finalizing the, 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 the write-up and the corresponding author is the one who actually assists the main author in writing at the same time who are the 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 the, the person who actually submit manage and also uh, communicate with the publisher of the journal so that's the reason why a main author and corresponding author were given uh, will have more responsibility therefore they they were they were they were rewarded accordingly as compared to co-author so this is my affiliation. So my name is my full name. My my real name is Muhammad Hafiz, Muhammad Hanafia. So this is Malaysian way of uh, it's a short, uh, I would say, uh, shortened uh, name of for Muhammad. So Muhammad Hafiz, Muhammad Hanafia. But I remove my father Muhammad just to make it uh, uh, not so long. And therefore my author name is Hanafia M H. If not, it's Hanafia M H M. Yeah, and this is my faculty. Very clear. This is my university. This is my branch, Selangor. This is my country, and this is my email. I'm using my official email, even though I have other generic emails. Yeah, and you have to update your university research profile. Yeah, this is important. Your university. This is uh, your ITM uh, research profile publication in which our publication will be validated by the library officer. Yeah. 
so this is good actually because uh, you know there's a lot of these uh, journals that claim they are scoppers but really they are not this is what we call predatory journals so the this this system actually uh, will vet will evaluate uh, will confirm whether your publication is actually scoppers or not so uh, then it will be translated into your your KPIs assessment so this is for universities yeah and I have my own uh, UITM expert profile. So uh, it lists all information needed, but this is merely for internal usage and for our international students and postgraduate students reference. Yeah, when when they want to when they want to search for potential supervisors or what. But again, this is the most important research communities or profiles. I do believe that Dr. Haider have this uh account activate yeah activated i think quite a while uh, i've been using google scholar for nearly 10 years i mean uh, i registered my orchid id uh pablon and scopus during my uh early years of phds yeah, masters yeah. and this is the steps of doing uh, i hope that you can follow the reason being is that because there are there there are some of these author profile that can be integrated I mean, they can communicate with each other, but there are also uh, issues that they are not allowed to communicate. So first thing first, if you are a young researcher, develop your Google Scholar profile. This is the easiest way. I mean, even if you, you are not uh, affiliated with any universities, you can create your own uni uh, Google Scholar profile using the free Gmail account. Okay. Uh, do not call me and ask me why you are not allowed to create uh, Google Scholar. If you are not, you did, did not have any Gmail account. You need to have your own Gmail account, and from there you can search for your uh, research publication that are in the Google Scholar, and they will be indexed accordingly. And the step two is to make sure that if you are a lecturer, uh, please update your your university repository system. Yeah. But then you can create your Pablon's profile even without any uh, publication in the of science. Yeah, you have that account and you can link all the WOS publication if you have to the Pablon's account. And then you can create Orchid ID. The reason why I, I start off with Orchid ID rather than Scopus because you can create Orchid ID and you can link Orchid ID profile with Pablon's. And last but not least is to import from Scopus. Okay, the Scopus, at, as of today, based on my uh, knowledge, you are not allowed. You can create your Scopus uh, account, but your Scopus author profile will only be created automatically when you publish one Scopus index article, either correspond, either proceedings or journals articles. And with that, you can import Pablons and Scopus out the uh, uh, data into orchid id so orchid id can uh, we say consolidate pablons and scopus uh, data in one account but pablons and scopus did not communicate because they are rivals you know pablons are owned by of science scopus are owned by elsevier i mean again uh, these are all business but you need to have that so you can see that uh, at the bottom of my slides orchid id is the best uh, profile to consolidate your online research profile that uh, reflects the high index publication from Scopus and Web of Science. So Google Scholar, very easy. Yeah, very easy. Um, this is a step. I, I don't think that I need to share this because uh, usually I'll do some sort of like a hands-on workshop, but you can always refer to my uh, slides to know the steps. You log into Google Scholar, at publication, yeah, uh, and then you can verify them and you can make it public because if your profile is private, it won't appear in such profile. So it's deep, defeat the purpose. Make it public, yeah? And you can edit your profile anytime, okay? And uh, this is your Google Scholar. You have to sign in. This is your profile. And you can you can include your name, affiliation. This is if you, if you don't have any account. This is the way how you create Google Scholar account. And you can search for your name and you can start select articles to be included in your profiles. And eventually, this is how 
your profile will look like. They have your, you have your picture, your your full name. This is your uh, organizations. It's a verified email. Yeah, and this is your area of research, and this is the 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 list of articles. Then this is your automatics. I mean, this is your citation count. Yeah, and this is the co-authors list that you have worked together. Okay, so uh, and the Orchid ID uh, is actually a central registry. Yeah, it uh, it is a unique ID for per scientist. Yeah, and it give researcher opportunity to uh, link and even uh, we say uh, merge with this uh, social media website such as ResearchGate and Google Scholar. So this is uh, the Orchid ID. You can sign in here. And you create your account, register, put all the information needed. Very simple. Don't worry. Do 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 do. Please use the same password for this profile. I mean, it is not your bank account, so don't worry about your password and make it the, the most simplest password. Yeah. yeah. And you after registration, you will have your own Orchid ID. The the best thing about Orchid ID is that whenever I want to submit my paper to journal. When I register my 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 name into that journals, I will always link it with Orchid ID, and eventually, whenever I want to uh, log into these journals, rather than uh, say uh, key in my username and password, I just click Orchid ID log login via Orchid ID, and it's automatically will get all the information that registered in Orchid ID into your into that journal system. It's very easy, and that's that's the reason why. I have no problem uh, uh, submitting papers because it's easy for me. Yeah, you, there is no need for you to key in every information again and again. Even I, I, uh, just to share with you, I have papers that were rejected like like twenty times. Yeah, but I keep on submitting to other until I found the right journal because this is this is just like selling a product. I mean, you you still yet to find customers who want to your product. Until at the end of the day, you 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 found out, and that is the the destination of your paper, the best destination. And I always believe with uh, uh, Razuki uh, 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 in Islam, we believe that it's Khadar dan Khadar. So don't worry. I mean, uh, but again, this is how to make your life is simpler and easier. Yep. And looking at Orchid ID, Orchid ID, you can see that I did. Uh, I have two Scopus author ID in which I merge it together and the register ID is the Pablo's ID. So the Orchid ID listed all the articles that are indexed in this author ID in here. And Pablo's, yeah, this is one of the craze right now. Pablo's is, I think, I think the best author profile that we have right now. I'll show you why. Uh, Pablo's is similar with uh, Google Scholar and also uh, okay, ID which state list articles that are only published by Web of Science. No Scopus paper here. Okay. okay. Again, we understand the arrivals. Yeah. So what happened here? You can register here and put all your name. Very simple. And then you search for your papers that are published in journals that are in the Web of Science. Add it, add it in your profile, and bang, you have your profile. And I'll show you why uh, I like Pablons. First, it listed, you can see from uh, the, a picture of mine, there's a name, my, my full name and my researcher ID. And below that, it reflects my current position, but you have to look at the automatics. First, it listed the publication, total time cited and age index. Okay, so that is norms. But it also published the verified review. So I believe that as a researcher, besides publishing, you are also reviewing papers. And with Pablons, it's very easy. Whenever you receive any invitation to review any journals, either it is indexed by Scopus, Web of Science, or non-indexed journals, after submitting your reviews to the editor, they will send you a thank you email. Yeah, And as soon as you receive that thank you email, you just forward that email to, I've been mean, using your official email. You just forward that thank you email to reviews at publons.com. And as easy as that, in within two to three days, they will index it. 
index your review in that particular what we say, uh, profiles. And even if you were invited as editor in conference uh, for a special issue, you can also share this information to them, email to them, and they will list it down. So very nice, very easy. And it gives some sort of like a value added information to your CV. Okay. And you can see this is my publication. They even show that uh, how many articles were published, were listed, and how many of them were actually WOS. Yep. Or, or scope. I mean, uh, there are also articles that are in Scopus, but that, that are not listed. Okay. So editor membership, they also link this. Editor board membership. If you are uh, uh, then, and also you can see here, Asia Pacific Journal of Innovation is Scopus. They did not put the the the, the icon there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I also verified editor reviews. Yeah. And that this is a verified review. Even they do some count. So you can see that I did a lot of reviews with journals of Islamic marketing, journal of modeling management, journal of hospitality and tourism inside. Yep. Yeah, uh, and the rest are uh, all these scopus and web of science journals. So this is this is good actually. This is this this actually reflects your scholar scholarship. Yeah? Okay, uh, Scopus author ID, again, this is automatically will be developed to you. But again, when they created that account for you, you can you can manage it. Yeah? Uh, you have can have a look on how you're going to search. This is how you search for author profile. Yeah? And how you can edit your author profiles. Yeah? Uh, and sometimes uh, you can have two different author ID in which you are allowed to merge it. So yeah. Uh, that's the, the beauty of Scopus. And you can request to merge or request author details correction. And you can see this is what is, or how does uh, Scopus author ID looks? You have your name, you have your orchid ID, where because the reason is because you already link your orchid ID with Scopus. You, you have your metrics overview, you have your document and citation plan, and you can see the most, uh, the area that you are publishing. So I can say that my area is destination image competitiveness, revisit intention, entrepreneurship intention, effectuation and uh, uh, sorry, entrepreneurship and also customer behavior. Okay, so again, this is the, uh, okay, the Scopus of the profiles. Yep, again. And research kit. So research kit is for me, my, my best friend. <laughs> Why? Uh, first, it's a free social networking site. You can have a lot of uh, website application. You can search for articles that are uploaded in ResearchGate. You can you have forums and groups where, where you can participate ever, where you can learn and unlearn things. You know, I have been asking questions. I've been answering questions from other researchers. Yeah, and you can register it for free. Again, this is how you register it, and this is my uh, ResearchGate profile. So this is uh, uh, another way for easy communication with your potential collaborators or postgraduate students. So the best thing is that whenever they form this again, they can always uh, send me a message saying that, hi, sir, I would like to collaborate. Hi, sir, can I, can I get your paper on, on this topic? I mean, I can reply. I can share my documents through this platform. Very easy. If you remember those days, uh, Dr. Haider, we have to email authors, hello there, I would like to get your paper, your paper is so good, can I get your instruments or what, and we have to wait for email, and we are worried that the emails will go into spam folder, I mean, and but now it's easy if you found the research gate, and you can see that they are very active, you can just text them using the research gate uh, uh, chat system. Uh, and besides this author that boring author profile you should be visible via facebook uh, i i have to say that facebook uh, I, I i previously i keep on sharing stupid thing in facebook during my young days eh? you know but as soon as i understand the power of facebook i started sharing only two things first to share information regarding myself share information regarding my research area, share uh, information about my industry, share about 
activities done by my friends and colleagues within the tourism realm. The second is sharing about my social life, about my families. You know why? Previously, I only, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the reason why we have to share both because we have to educate the young one. I do believe that I have to educate the young one that looking at me, I mean, Dr. Haider also claimed that I, I, I was very active, I'm very busy and cannot, cannot understand how I did, did I find time with my families. Yeah, so we are not trying to uh, penetrate our young researchers saying that they have to work all day long. You know, uh, as a researcher, there are times that you have to be very focused on research, but there are times that you can enjoy. So this social media actually reflects the way of life. As a researcher, that you 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 share uh, what we say scholarly uh, information. At the same time, you are allowed to be socially active with your families, with your friends, having a drinks. There's no problem with that. Yeah. So uh, talking about Facebook, besides sharing the information, you can join groups that are focusing on research, such as, such as doctorate support group. Uh, this is one of the biggest uh, uh, group on research eh, that actually allow you to get information about conferences, about publication, or even if you have problem of getting articles, you can just share that. Uh, okay, I just suppose that you need this paper. There will be within that two to three minutes, there will be someone who will be sharing information or uh, sharing the link for you to download this paper or articles. The reason is because the members are spread around the world. So perhaps maybe. Uh, I, my university doesn't subscribe to that particular uh, repository, but friends from Edinburgh, friends from University of Florida, who actually have access with that, they can download it and they can share to me. So you can see how easy if you are, uh, you are participating in this, uh, we say, social uh, networking platforms. Yeah? And uh, this is examples of my myself and my colleagues who share uh, scholarly insight in Facebook, yeah, you can see this is my pr previous boss, Prof. Adare Baharud, who, who did write quite a few times on a research, what is a research proposal. And you can see that how many people like. So you can see this is how you are visible. Uh, this is also a colleague of mine. Uh, actually, she, he's my one of my lecturers during my diploma years. So he's very active in a PhD supervis supervisory. <clears throat> and myself, uh, I also write. Uh, I did write in Malay and also English. Uh, just for translation, uh, this article or uh, I, I wrote about ranking. I, I wrote why we have to focus on ranking, because uh, I mean there are arguments saying that ranking is not important. Mm -hmm. Our main customer is students. We should be teaching rather than doing research. Yeah, I mean this this is the uh, the the issues. Uh, surrounding the universities right now. What should we do? Are we a teaching university? Are we a research university? But again, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, there must be some sort of like a legit uh, assessment on how do we perform. And at the end of the day, ranking is the best. The available QS and THE ranking is the best uh, assessment, not only for us as a uh, university, but also for uh, peers and also for our potential international students, because that's how our university sustain themselves by getting international students and quality students. Yeah. So that, that, that is argument. And yeah, you can share those insights. I mean, you have to allow uh, scholarly discussion happens. And perhaps from there, you will create an impression about yourself to your uh, I would say potential collaborators. Inshallah. So, uh, yeah, uh, well, this is another, what we say, profiles. It's a social media profile linking you with the industries. Yeah, so you can share a lot of links. And also, I even created my own website. Uh, I mean, uh, using Wix.com, very easy, very simple. And I just share uh, my, my link to Scorpus author ID, uh, Pablons from my website and it's easy for them to search and to understand, to get to know me 
virtually easier and it, hopefully they can download my CV and they can understand what I've been teaching. Yep. So a lot of information can be shared online. And yeah, I think that's it. I'm not going to talk more because I think it's only nearly one hour. Yeah, And I understand that uh, everyone, uh, do, right now it's 10 o'clock uh, in the evening in Malaysia. I think it's uh, 8 o'clock in Pakistan. And uh, my concern will be at the end of this uh, sharing session is that you need to understand that visibility is the game changer uh, uh, you can be publishing a lot you can be publishing in good journals but again if people cannot find you if people cannot search you and people cannot communicate with you that it fill the purpose the purpose to disseminate information to search for new knowledge to search for new information and to create a network that actually allow us to share uh, quality information, quality scholarly uh, knowledge yeah, to, to the mass. So again, as a researcher, you have to focus on two uh, aspects, which is to make yourself as a researcher visible and to make your research work visible. Hence, I do believe that uh, based on my experience, my friend experience, and I've seen uh, how uh, online visibility affect the career path of academia around the world. I do believe that by partaking in these uh, activities, visibility activities, it will increase your reputation and the chances for you to be success in this competitive academic world. So with that, uh, I'll, I'll rest my case, and I, I hope that Dr. Haider can share my slide to uh, anyone who would like to have this uh, information. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Prof. It was so wonderful to listen to your wonderful presentation, the content, I would say the powerful content. And I loved the way you started your first opening statement. That was so great that... Uh, uh, research is lifelong learning process. So that was a great thing to start your presentation with. And then very nicely, you have admitted that from your mistakes, you have learned a lot. It means that people like you have gone through certain learning experiences. And that's why you have reached to that high level. And that's the wonderful thing we admitted that, yes, we committed certain mistakes at the start of the, our research career. And this is how we have grown and we have learned from our previous mistakes. That was so great. And I love the way you have uh, made the slides. They are so powerful and the content was so great in a way. You the research uh, which can be seen, which can be found, which can be cited very nicely. And you have given a wonderful images to it. And that conveys more message while watching to it that how it is important. And then you have segregated the two important aspects. One is the research uh, itself and then the researcher profile, which are two different, I would say, things which needs to be managed accordingly. And you said very well that, yes, the visibility is the game changer. Yes, of course. And that makes a very much sense that, yes, you have to be very much visible in the academic world. People should uh, be noticing you and then they can follow you, they can cite your research work. And I love the most important aspect was that you have shown the way how to create different accounts. Yes, you are very right that uh, at our time it was a very difficult, but nowadays it's very easy and everything is very much connected and that is how things work. People just go to the research gate, to the Google Scholar, to the ORCID ID, yes, we have these things. Why? Because it gives us so much facilitation, which you have referred to. And uh, thank you very much once again for your encouragement as well. Uh, I would say that uh, credit goes to you people as well, because you people come and share your knowledge, which is very much important. Uh, before the session, we were discussing that, yes, before the COVID-19, uh, these kind of activities were uh, missing and it was 
and the gap that uh, yes people should be educated and there should be a, uh, awareness programs which can actually help them to learn more in a better way and they have access to the experts around the world which is a great thing and i would say uh, the way you explained everything in a so wonderful way the calm way and uh, your uh, wonderful presentation along with your tone and the, the deep knowledge you have uh, the command you have was very much visible in your presentation i uh, really learned a lot from you uh, dear prophet i would say uh, we normally there is a one quotation that if you learn a single word from someone that becomes your teacher so you have become our teacher because you have we have learned a lot from this session thank you very much uh, if you allow me should we start with the first question please yes please do yeah. and i would say that prof you have covered 90 to 95 percent answers <laughs> because uh, all of these things were the same thing people were confused regarding the social media the journal and the title and the everything and you have very well explained it and that's why i said 90 to 95 percent because these are the common doubts which uh, people have in their mind but you have very nicely uh, removed it and few of the other questions which are somehow related to that thing which you have already explained but needs a bit of explanation of and your personal thoughts so the first question is, uh, uh, dear Prof, you have very rightly mentioned that the title and abstract should be very attractive and that is should be sellable. So please guide us. Uh, sh should we have the, uh, the title which are more friendly to the search engine? Is that what you referred to? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. for the questions. I mean, uh, I always um, believe with the Chinese way of doing business i mean previously they they imitate and they downgrade the quality and they produce um, subpar pro products but nowadays the chinese they imitate and they innovate these products mm -hmm. you know so the same goes with us uh, i always um, share with my students and also my counterparts that the best place for you to get ideas are from past studies but talking about past studies, uh, you have to be selective. I mean, when you search for uh, past studies, look at the recent studies that were published in 2021 and 2022. This is where first you can you can understand what are the trends within that particular realm. Yeah, what are the things that are currently being researched? Meaning that it is still acceptable by the scholar world that these things should be researched more. Yeah. So the first mistake most of my postgraduate students did is that they just did a standard Google Scholar search and they start citing papers, issues that were published in 2006, which were not considered as alleged issues in 2022. So that is a concern. And the second is to they, they, they start uh, developing their title and also abstract based on uh, old research, old publication. So what is the best uh, suggestion for me for that part for this particular question is that always refer to the current research that had been published, how they write their, their title, how they report their abstracts. And nowadays uh, journals love to have structured abstracts. Yep. Even if uh, even like uh, Taylor and Francis, even though they don't have structured upset, they prefer to ensure that the write up follow accordingly to the purpose of the study, methodology, uh, findings, what are the implications, and what how, what how, what origin uh, the originality of this research. So if you have these elements, then your study is usually acceptable. Dr. Haider, I think you you are very you are also one of the prominent researchers, and you understand that it is easy for our paper to be rejected. Yeah, and the, the 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 fastest way is to get desktop rejection, you know. And usually, there is this these papers were read by associate editors, young researcher that just go uh, read through your abstract and uh, automatically reject your paper. So this is why your abstract should be specific, should be direct, and should highlight the originality 
the novelty of your study. So this is where usually we make the mistake. I've learned through my mistakes, uh, and I can say that uh, by having a good title and also my track would uh, give you a lifeline for mm. paper to be accepted to go through to the reviewing stage. Yes. yes. Very nicely said, Prof. Thank you very much for such an elaborative answer. And yes, of course, and I usually uh, probably say to my classes that I have four rejections, I have six rejections, and that shows that we are striving hard to submit and to uh, publish it. And I loved your phrase that it is our product and we have to sell it and we have to try and again and we have to improve it. And I love one thing about the revision or even the test rejection that they give some certain kind of uh, area of improvement which actually beautify our work. And uh, I believe that uh, most of our papers, they got improved just because of the major are uh, the rejection reviews, which is nice thing to improve our paper. Even though as a researcher, I don't like the rejection, but still we have to accept it with the heavy heart that yes, uh, we, we, we learn through this process. And I love your this phrase that yes, uh, uh, you have to grow and you have to learn from the rejection. That is the yeah. nice thing. Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to add up on your uh, saying that uh, it's good to get a uh, command from the reviewer because they improve your articles. I mean, uh, there's there's few few ways you get comment from the reviewer. Uh, the best, uh, the, the 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 worst is rejection. That's rejection. Uh, that will be like very fast. Like if within a week you're going to get rejections. Well, it's good because they, 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 they reject your paper very fast and you can move on to another submission as fast as you can. Uh, rather than having a journal that kept your article for three months, six months, and suddenly they reject it. I mean, you know, research must be recent and you have to update the references and everything. But again, you might receive major rejection. And this, for me, is the best news ever for any researcher because major rejection means that they accepted your paper but you have to do a lot of amendment then that amendment actually were guided by the comments which definitely will improve your works uh, the things that i i'm worried is when i get uh, acceptance with minor and the worst case is acceptance without any correction uh, somehow is it is it true that my paper is that good isn't it? Should it get some some more revisions in order to enhance the paper? So yes, but again, at the end of the day, uh, the paper that been published is a better version of the articles that were prepared initially. So a good paper will get citation. A good paper will get readers. So that is our aim. Yeah. Yeah. True. Very true. And I love your statement. Yes, that is how. Uh, it uh, refines and I say I, it uh, it uh, pop, uh, uh, polishes that way our work. And uh, very nicely you have mentioned that uh, whenever we get a major correction, it means uh, uh, it is now, uh, it will be in more pure, purified version and it would be in a best version because uh, it will be there on internet. A lot of researchers, experts, they will go through and then they will recognize uh, and they will recognize with the good words that yes we have done a very good job and that's what happens which you also mentioned that when you publish in top journals are the good uh, factor are the prestigious journal they have a very wonderful review process you will always get wonderful revisions and now uh, uh, one of our paper for the past two and a half year is in the journal and we did the second revisions as well and now we are hoping for uh, acceptance. But if we look at to the paper we had submitted in the first place and now in the second revision, oh, the paper has changed a lot, improved a lot. Yeah, and we have done the uh, proofreading again. So it's really, uh, when we see our paper, it has changed a lot and improved a lot. Very rightly said. Uh, there is a one quick question uh, one of the person asked in comment section, which is very much relevant to this, our talk. And then we keep on uh, continue for uh, stick to the topic. That is that uh, if the, our paper is uh, rejected from the one journal, should we send the paper at same journal after making improvements? 
by sending it again to the same journal? Do you recommend it? Yes, please. Um, yeah, that's that's actually an interesting question, which I I did answer it. I think uh, last two days uh, on another platforms of discussion. Uh, I mean, it goes back to your school of thought. I mean, my way of doing things is that. When the journal is rejected, meaning that they did not found any interesting elements in your articles, even if it has been uh, improved. Yeah, if they found something that are interesting, they should actually accept with major correction. So what I did is that as soon as I get rejection, I'll move to another journal. Yep. So I will not uh, submit to, to the same journal, but doesn't mean that I I I ban, avoid this this journal. I will submit to this journal with other papers, another papers. Yeah. But that uh, my my publication rulings uh, when they rejected, I move on to another journal. So with that, uh, we we the, the the most important thing in submission is to get comments. So that's the reason that I don't like desk rejection because desk, desk rejection usually they will reject using templates. Template statement. Uh, your paper has been rejected because it is not in line with the general scope. It, this is a very generic template. So we want to get if uh, uh, the best thing is that to get rejection with comments from the editor. So what I did is that when, as soon as I get the comments, I am going to revamp the paper according to the comments how to, to try to put it in context, but I will submit it to another journal. So uh, that that goes again to uh, your likings. So I maybe Dr. Haider will try again and again to submit to the same journal, but I can see my success rate is much better when I move on to another journal. Yes, Prof. thank you very much Prof. Uh, such a wonderful answer. And uh, I completely agree with you, and this is what I do. Uh, you know, uh, once we get rejection from the journal, then we always try to see another journal, the aim and scope of the journal, and we send to the another one. And but I love the what you mentioned is I love to have a rejection, but at least with the comments for uh, improvement. That is the great thing, not the desk rejection without any <laughs> reasons, which is very uh, difficult to absorb. Uh, one last question, since uh, we have taken a lot of your time, uh, Prof, quickly, just your intake on this question. It has two parts. The A part is, uh, uh, Prof, do you recommend the, should we use the academic search engine optimization for promotion of our research work? That was the first part of it. And second uh, question they want to ask that uh, the journal policy may play a vital role in the article visibility. What is your comment on that? Yes, please. Okay, yeah. First is definitely, my answer will be definitely. I mean, you should utilize all available author profiles as long as you, uh, you, you can manage them. Do not create author profile yeah, without any proper planning on how to manage it because you need to do a lot of housekeeping. I mean, some of them need you to do it weekly. Some of them you need to do it monthly. So yeah, please make sure that it is uh, it is it is planned appropriately. The reason being is that uh, right now in U UITM, whenever you want to apply for your uh, promotions, you still uh, besides the uh, university platform, you still need to finish your Google Scholar uh, CV your Pablons and also your KID and even your scholar, uh, Scopus author ID CV. You have to print and you have to send it to the top management. So, well, definitely, I think um, all these top universities are doing the same thing. And that's the reason why uh, even uh, research visibility or scholar visibility have been included in the young lecturer scheme uh, we say courses, yeah, uh, in order for to prepare them uh, to embrace with these uh, applications. So I do agree, and I do strongly propose that all researcher, no matter whether you are young or you are senior researcher, you should start updating your profiles. 
Yeah. So uh, and that that is the first question. So the second question again, uh, Haider. The second question is on. Uh, is the prof regarding the general policy may play a vital role in the article visibility yes please okay that's good so uh, yeah i thought i i do understand that there are certain journals who who did not allow you to share your uh, articles in researchgate or even to share it in your own website but again you as a author or the co-authors uh, will be given a copy of your articles and you are allowed to share it privately. So you may share it in uh, using your emails, or even you may share your article using the research kit by opting for the sharing privately option. You know, so when 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 people search for your articles, they found your articles, but they are not allowed to download it automatically. So they have to send you a a message saying that I would like that there's, there's an option in research gate that. Uh, request for full text. I think I don't know about it. And you, uh, as the the owner, you are going to get the message, and you can, with one click, you can share it. So it is actually similar by with with the uh, with sharing through emails. So ResearchGate make it easier for author to request for articles and for you to share your articles privately. So. Yep, uh, I have, uh, based on my experience, previously I did not upload my articles in ResearchGate. So my my citation count was quite low. And in 2016, I upload all my articles, either uh, privately or publicly, according to the journal's requirement. And my citation count gone up tremendously. And the reason being that uh, I, am, I am searchable. I can be found, my research work can be found, my research work can be downloaded, my research work can be read, my research work will be cited. So well, that, that is my concern. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And Prof, you have now given the practical example of your own. That's the wonderful thing. You connect the first dot with the last dot that how it is linked. And that's the beauty of the researcher. They always connect and link, develop the link between what they say and they give the reference for it and you have given multiple references so from your these kind of explanation we can get the notion that how great researcher you are and you are a wonderful speaker and narrator as well very nicely said thank you very much once again uh, uh, prof hafiz hanifai uh, the wonderful thing which i loved about your this learning session was that uh, a wonderful explanation and a powerful content which you explain is so great and i'm sure it is very enlightenment session for the upcoming researcher the people who are watching and the people who will watch if in future they are going to learn so many new things from whatever you have explained because these are the things which the young researcher particularly they don't know they don't know which kind of uh, uh, databases exist where you can uh, have the visibility and how can you create your accounts uh, that are very uh, I, I would say great guidance for them to learn from uh, thank you once again prof at the end of the session we ask our each guest that what is your message to the world as a teacher researcher trainer learner professional and educator yes please uh, okay so for my last word uh, as a as a learning researcher, as a learning researcher, as a young academia, uh, I do believe that uh, lifelong learning should be inculcated in our life. Uh, there's no right or wrong. Everything can be learned and relearned. Yeah? And there's no harm for you to learn about new things that may, may be beyond uh your research area and i've done that i was quite surprised with myself i was invited to do a research on cancer patients which was way beyond my my area and i did prepare a proposal and i did present it to the experts and it was well received and besides that one thing that i learned is that i learned a lot i learned something new and I learned 
I, I learned much on cancer and how it affects our quality of life. And I saw an opportunity for us to go across the department or disciplinary. Yeah, rather than just uh, staying in the same discipline, yeah, you are allowed, you could, and uh, you will say you could learn new things and you could start doing research across abroad your research area, learning on new things. So yeah, uh, uh, I wish all of you uh, safety you know, with the COVID-19. I think people are moving forward, the nations are moving forward. Everyone are currently opening the borders, uh, and I hope that it allow us to be uh, to to be mobile and to do more things uh, that are limited with COVID nineteen. And uh, but again, I hope to meet all of you physically. Hopefully, we can meet Dr. Haider in Malaysia or even in Pakistan. But mm -hmm. I I applaud the Calwas uh, effort in making knowledge available not only for Pakistani researcher, but also for the world to learn, to share, and also to uh, understand. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's all from me, Dr. Haider. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Hafiz. It was so great to listen to your wonderful message to the world around the globe, that openness to learn. And I loved your message, including that researcher must work interdisciplinary because uh, through synergy, we learn a lot. And that's how you very nicely mentioned and pointed out that researchers should not stick to his area of research that should also explore. And you have again, once again, uh, I would say congratulations by connecting your own experience that how you work and you go beyond of your expert area and to learn something new. And this that's the beauty of the researcher that they go to the another area, explore, they work with another research uh, experts, the other disciplinary, for example, our own uh, research in uh, human resource management, we work with the pro-environmental practices. We see how green HR practices are impacting the pro-environmental behavior. So all of things are very much connected and this is how the new specialization is occurring and uh, uh, developing from the synergy work and I think that's the lovely thing about the researcher and the research study that we always try certain new things and we get the new and we develop the new things. A very wonderful message to the world openness to new things. Don't worry about it and try to go for experimentation. And this is how you learn. So again, you have connected the same thing that don't worry about anything. You have to be open towards the uh, understanding of new things. And thank you very much for your uh, support and encouragement. Uh, really, uh, people like you are the assets for the world. And we want you people just to follow your foot, uh, footprints because I believe the way you people are working is so great. You people are doing wonderful contribution to the field and world. Uh, we really appreciate and we pray for your success, for your health and wealth as well. And uh, I, I would say really very wonderful session with you, Prof. So thank you once again. Uh, a wonderful explanation, powerful content. Uh, do follow the distinguished guest speaker through his research work and you can email him for future learning and guidance. He is very generous and always ready to help the people. And uh, that is all we have time for today. Thank you once again, Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Hanafia. And I would also like to thank our audience who joined us. If you have any additional question about the information shared today, please email to us or connect with the speaker directly through his email address, LinkedIn, and other social media accounts. They are particularly the official email address is also there. And thank you all for your support and liking our session. Stay tuned as many sessions are on the way. Please do not miss any session. Until next session, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.